SQL Server has an entire system for working with temporary tables, usually just referred to as temp tables. Let me start out by explaining what a temp table is. A temp table is a table that is created that only has a life for that one particular connection for that one user or within that one stored procedure. So it's tightly scoped and it's scoped specific to that one connection such that if another connection tries to work with a temp table of the same name, it sees its own implementation of that temp table. And we'll see this in a few minutes, that SQL Server actually creates a table for each temp table implementation within the tempdb. Well, let me go ahead and show you. So opening up Object Explorer, coming up to System Databases, there's tempdb. And you want to just make sure that tempdb has enough room to grow by auto growth. Sometimes it's a good idea just to go ahead and make the size larger so you're not always expanding tempdb. And in SQL Server 2005, tempdb is used not only by temp tables, but also it's used heavily by the query optimizer for temporary record sets as it's working through queries. So tempdb is often the bottleneck for your database. So when you need to create a temporary table, you use the create table command the same way you would for a regular table, except that you put this pound in front of it. So here we will create a temporary table called temp, I'm saying temp as the pound, product temp, and I'm just going to insert a simple value in it so we'll have one row. And if we select, we see yes, it's there. And just to prove this out, I'm going to open up a second query and split the tab group. So over in this other connection, and here we have SPID or connection ID 51. This is 52 over here. Let's just go ahead and copy this code and execute it. And we introduced one. Let's uh, add a two. add a 3, and in the second connection the temp product table will have all three rows. Back over here in the first one in this temp table, there's still just the one row because each temporary table is a separate table. And if we go over to the tempdb using part of a fully qualified name, here's the database name, schema name, sys objects, we're going to go ahead and look for any objects named pound PRO, just so we can find those tables. And you see it created actually two tables, and let me make this longer so we can see the full width. It created behind the scenes two temp tables for us, and appended out some kind of ID there for it, so it can tell the difference between them. If we come and drop this connection, don't need to save that and execute this again. You'll see it automatically drops that table when the connection no longer exists. So that illustrates the scope of a temp table. It exists just for the life of that one connection. I do want to give a caution about overusing temp tables as buckets to store data between queries. I've seen in code a style of developing stored procedures where query 1 selects some data and it goes into a temp table, and then query 2 selects some more data and it goes into another temp table, then query 3 joins temp table 1 and temp table 2 with another subquery, and then that goes into a third temp table. And while there are some very, very rare cases where using a temp table can help the query optimizer, 99 times out of 100 you're going to be better off by putting that work right into a larger query and letting the query optimizer do the entire process rather than creating these buckets manually and trying to help out the query optimizer. One instance where a temp table is extremely useful is when you need to pass data from one stored procedure to another stored procedure that's being called. For example, if stored procedure A needs to have data returned from stored procedure B, a temp table created by stored procedure A will be seen by stored procedure B, can be populated, and then when stored procedure B finishes, stored procedure A can then examine that data. 
And that's very useful because if stored procedure B simply does a select statement or tries to return data, that will be returned all the way to the front end client, not to the calling stored procedure. So temp tables are often used as a way of passing data sets between stored procedures as they're called. SQL Server also has global temp tables. And the difference is that a global temp table will be seen by every connection and will continue to exist as long as at least one connection sees it. Then when the last connection is dropped, then the global temp table ceases to exist. The problem with global temp tables is that every time you want to use it, you'll have to test to see, does this temp table exist? And if not, create it, and then continue to work with it. So a little bit of extra code, and to be honest, whenever I've needed to have some kind of temp table just to pass variables back and forth or keep track of the status of something, I've ended up creating a normal table and used that for my temporary variable work. But this is the kind of code you could use to see, does this global temp table exist? And if it does not exist, meaning there's no rows returned looking for this temp work table, then go ahead and create it. And then this would initialize it, and this code would have to be run at the beginning of every stored procedure that might want to work with that global temp table. Introduced in SQL Server 2000 is a table variable. A misconception is that table variables actually exist in memory. They don't. They look like they do, but they actually don't. SQL Server more or less tricks out tempdb and allows you to work with a table as if it's a memory variable. It's really just best to think of this as a, as a table variable. We saw this briefly in the output clause for data modification in the last lesson. So the syntax is, instead of doing a create table, it's a declare because it's a variable. Because it's a variable, we have to put an at sign in front of it like we would any other variable. But for the data type, we define it as a table and put out all the columns the same way we would for a regular table. But table variables have a very limited scope as far as their life. They're seen only within this batch. When the batch terminates, the table terminates. And it's not seen by any called stored procedures like a regular temp table would be. So to execute this, these lines declare it. This code inserts some sample data into the work table table variable. And then we'll select it. This will generate an error, but if I just come right now and select it, of course, it says we can't because we have to declare it. Even if we declare it and then come down again to select it, it's still not there because the life of it is only for the one execution of the batch. If we run the whole batch, then it works fine.